My name is Dr. Lauren Walker. I'm a registered clinical psychologist and an adjunct associate professor at the University of Calgary. And my area of focus has been in helping individuals with sexual health concerns, in particularly those after a cancer diagnosis, and really even more specifically people with prostate cancer. I am both a researcher and a clinician, and it's something that I've really always valued about my training, that we need to use research to inform ourselves about what's effective in terms of treatments, what are people actually experiencing, and what I value about research as well is that you're getting a, a large group of people reporting on something. Whereas if you just talk to one person, you're getting their idiosyncratic experience of what is relevant for them. And that's valuable for that one person, but it then makes it difficult to extrapolate to helping a lot of different people. So the research informs what we do clinically, but I think the other piece of this is knowing that what we do clinically informs the research because we need to know what do people need help with? What are the challenges that they're coming up against? And then we can use that to generate questions and create studies to answer those questions. In my experience, I've found that there are some topics that are particularly difficult to talk about. Um, some of those might include finances, death and dying, cancer, uh, and of course, sexuality. And so, Imagine trying to get people to open up, not only about talking about sex more generally, but also about their own experiences of sexual um, difficulty. So we, I think, as individuals don't really want to admit if we're having problems in any area of our life, let alone something that is so intimate as sexuality. And I think in the world of prostate cancer, when you have men who have been conditioned their whole lives to be masculine and tough and not admit that they might be struggling with something, pair that with sexual concerns, and it becomes a really even more difficult topic to talk about. I think one of the most important things in making sure that people feel comfortable or as comfortable as they can talking about sexuality is by first just setting an environment that it's okay to talk about. If we avoid the topic, we then will never uh, set the stage for a discussion about it. So one of the things that I often encourage people to do is really just take a very matter-of-fact approach and a normalizing approach. One in which you might say, it's quite common for people to have sexual changes after cancer treatment. Have you noticed any changes? Instead of assuming that people either don't have changes or do, you just state that it's actually a common experience. And that can often be enough for people to realize, oh, maybe I'm not weird for having these kinds of changes or concerns, and I can freely talk about that. Certainly, I think some patients might feel reticent or unsure about bringing up these topics with their healthcare provider. Some of them may even assume, you know, how do I navigate that or, or how do I go in with a certain kind of attitude so that I can, can come out with what I'm looking for. And that might be coming in with an expectation of, do you know of any resources anywhere else you can send me? If you're getting the sense that your healthcare provider is maybe a little bit uncomfortable. But I think the big thing here is not about the patient trying to make their healthcare provider feel comfortable, but the healthcare provider needs to be the one who just gets over it and starts having the conversation. And I really think that the important thing is that healthcare providers recognize that this is a profound experience very, very common that cancer survivors are going to experience sexual difficulties and changes after treatment. And so we just need to assume that that is probably part of their experience that they're adapting to, and we need to ask them about it. I think one of the things that has really evolved in terms of healthcare and access to services these days is the fact that we don't go into our doctor for simple, straightforward things like having a laceration bandaged. We're actually coming in now with complex symptoms, uh, cancer survivorship being one of those things, in that it impacts our identity, um, our sense of who we are. And so it's not that you can just give me a pill to fix that now. I actually want to talk about how I feel about it, how it um, has impacted my sense of who I am. And, and the healthcare provider, depending on their training, may or may not be equipped to handle that. But I think they can absolutely also be aware of resources and places to refer, for example, counseling, to be able to look at that from a more um, diverse perspective.